So you had right. quite a few admits. So please share your profile and the admits that you have, uh, you know, for your MBA in Canada. Sure, ma'am. Um, talking about my profile, I've been working in JP Morgan for the last uh, three and a half plus years. And uh, I, I believe I have had that kind of experience where I was working in multiple teams, multiple roles. And as of now, I work as a project manager in uh, one of the teams in JP Morgan. So I believe it was the right time for me to go ahead for an MBA because um, after a certain point, I believe you need to upgrade yourself and, uh, you know, have much more experience than you already have to accelerate your career growth, right? So I decided to go for an MBA, uh, apply for an MBA after this point in my life. And um, talking about why, like, where I wanted to apply for. So I wanted to get an international experience. And I believe uh, this is something that was very important for me to consider because uh, choosing a country and choosing where to apply to was a big decision that I had to make, right? So I tried to get into a university in Canada. Right. So, um, you know, how did Canada come into place? Why an MBA in Canada? Yeah, so um, I believe the biggest reason for me to choose Canada as my um, study destination for an MBA was because of A, easier work permits, uh, or B, uh, I, I believe a lot of other countries have more stringent, um, you know, uh, stringent processes when it comes to, you know, working post your study uh, visa gets over, right? Like, for example, US. So US has much difficult laws and considering all the layoffs and everything that just happened. So I believe I wanted to be a little more secure when it came to, uh, you know, building my career in another country. And Canada gives a very good option uh, for us to do that. So that is why I, I chose Canada. Right. So you have uh, options for pursuing an MBA in India as well. So how did you compare an MBA in India versus an MBA in Canada? Sure, ma'am. Um, in India, I think... MBAs are synonymous with IMs and everything, right? But I believe after a certain work experience in your life, uh, we are much more open to having an international experience. Like it's easier to get into an international MBA after three or four years of experience, which is not usually the time frame when people in India go for an MBA. I believe there are institutes like ISD and you know maybe Masters Union people go for MBAs to that institutes after four or five years of experience. But uh, yeah, again. I think it boils down to personal preference. And for me, I wanted to get an international exposure. I wanted to be in a class setting where I am talking to people from diverse backgrounds and different countries. So again, it boils down to personal preference. But for me, I really wanted to go and get um, an international exposure when it came to my higher studies. Right. So tell us about your admits, uh, you know, what programs uh, you have admits from and how did you choose uh, which ones to apply to, especially for your Canadian programs? Sure, ma'am. Um, I believe there are uh, there are a few institutes like which come on top when it comes to uh, good MBAs in Canada. Uh, so I applied majorly to three schools in Canada. One was Rotman School of Business, University of Toronto. Second one was Shulik, which is York University. And third one was UBC, right? So... I got admits from UBC or uh, I got admits from Rotman and Shulik and I chose Rotman to go ahead with my um, MBA. I believe Rotman gave a very good brand value, would associate a very good brand value to my profile. And secondly, I believe the location is also in Toronto, downtown Toronto. The placements are excellent. And that's something that, you know, really motivated me to go ahead and choose Rotman as my um, school. Right. And you had a good scholarship as well. I got a uh, decent scholarship, yes. Yes. Right. So, what is a good GMAT score? And, uh, you know, how did you prepare for the GMAT? Being a working professional, how did you right. spare out time and uh, plan the GMAT activity? Right. Um, I believe GMAT, uh, so although the average GMAT for Rotman is around 670, 680, but I still believe that it's really, really safe to have a score which is greater than 700. There are people with a lot of work experience when it comes to international MBAs. And there, there are people who have experience of seven years, eight years working in like amazing uh, profiles in amazing companies all across the world. So it's very difficult to get into an international MBA with uh, a score which is little less than 700. So unless and until we have something to complement that score which is slightly less than 700, then 
but then again anything above 700 is a safe score to apply and as far as uh it comes to me how i prepared along with you know working full time i think things kind of fell into place for me a little bit because of the whole covid situation wherein i did get a, a little bit of more time to prepare for it and i did uh take the gmat a couple of times so the first time i got a 690 although i thought of applying for it but then again this maybe it's a mental barrier or a psychological thing wherein you are like you're almost there at 700 but you're not at 700 so i tried to take the gmat again and i went to uh and i uh, the first attempt gave me a lot of basics i, I put in a lot of time and put in a lot of effort so just before my uh, you know work shift started and i got in a couple of hours here and there every week and tried to prepare as much for it i used to practice a lot there were certain fundamentals that we needed to clear before i got into practicing things but after a point it's about practicing and understanding what exactly are the errors that we are repeating and taking a lot of mock tests taking a lot of uh, you know uh, practice tests to strengthen what we've already studied so again so i took a couple of hours um, every week here and there like on a, on a daily basis or on alternate days and i prepared for around 2 to 2 and a half months in my first attempt and again 2 months around for my second attempt to um, get to 720 my gmat right and uh, rotman being one of the top uh, most schools in canada how hard is it to get into rotman you know what are the essays like what is the interview experience like what is the expectation and how did you prepare for it sure um i believe rotman had a very interesting essay they asked for the spike factors in your uh, profile right so that's not something that usually comes into picture for a lot of other beast schools so i believe this was a very um, unconventional sort of an essay that that they asked for and i think it's more about being candid and how you have worked to get where you are right now and those spikes are something that will be uh, you know very specific to you as a person and very specific to you as a professional so those spike factors was an interesting essay, uh, interesting essay to write but then again it required a lot of introspection and preparation that what exactly is it that you want to portray yourself as what are the skills what are the qualities that you would want to uh, you know put out there for your uh, um, profile right so that was an interesting essay and when it comes to the interview i believe the interview was pretty um okay i mean they, there was not a lot, lot of to and to and, uh, to and fro when it came to the interview so the interviewer had a set of questions that she had already prepared that these are the things that i would want to know about this individual and these are the things that i would want to discuss although she was very open in terms of um if i was uh, you know working towards a if i had a particular train of thought she would jump in and maybe add a couple of points and she allowed me also to be to go derail from that question a little bit and you know express more about what i want to uh, talk about so it was a pretty short interview not a lot of grilling around it so you had admits from uh, the york university shulik school of business as well as rotman so when it comes to deciding between rotman and shulik you know what were the criteria that were important to you how did you evaluate that sure no. um i believe one of the biggest criteria is the brand value that rotman and university of toronto that um, you get right so that's a much bigger brand than say shulik which is york university so there is much more international recognition there is much more again the brand value associated to it and secondly it's i think important to also go through the placement reports and see what exactly are the placements for every college if there are enough companies for the profile that you are aiming for or if there's not a lot of clarity that you have but still what college provides you with more opportunities in terms of exploration and and finding what exactly is it that you would want to pursue after your mba so i believe rotman fulfilled most of those criteria and um secondly it is based out of downtown toronto and downtown toronto is the financial hub for canada so it definitely gives us much more networking opportunities much more you know events that we can go out to interact with and that eventually adds up to us getting much more 
opportunities when it comes to making career decisions and switching companies or switching profiles as well so i believe rotman was a better choice for me in terms of what i wanted to uh, achieve from my mba as an uh, um, as an indian planning to pursue an mba in canada especially you know what are the things that uh, you need to prepare before you put up your applications and once you get the admits what are other things that are important uh, to be prepared for right uh, so i believe to before you uh, you know put in your applications i think again it's very important to understand if canada is the right destination for you or not and if that is the right destination because that is something that you would be building your career in that is the country that you would be building your career in so if you see future prospects in that country i think it's the primary decision that you have to make before applying to any country for that matter so once you've decided on the country that um you're working towards then it comes to shortlisting what all colleges that you would want to apply to once that is done i believe then we can see and understand that what exactly is our profile that we would would want to um you know put forward for for the applications so the introspection part of things and the crafting of essays and understanding what exactly is that that we have done which kind of outshines what the general public would also you know do and and introspecting again is the major thing that comes when when it comes to um, you know applying for colleges so that takes up a lot of time that takes up a lot of energy and then that is something that we need to be very clear about because whatever we write has to resonate with what is it exactly that we are you know uh, doing because there has to be a clear cut picture and it has to be coherent so in the interviews as well that that becomes very important so as an indian i believe um again the introspection part of things is very important which goes away from how we have been conditioned in the indian education system so that's a little unconventional way of going about things but then again i i i believe um it does give you an opportunity to you know apply in a very different format the, the entire world is doing more or less in working in more or less the same way so it gives us that experience so it's it's a pretty um interesting and new experience for us to apply as indians to any university uh, outside and um okay so after we apply after we get the admit yeah so once we once we get through the interviews and everything i think the next part is the visa application process i still think it's a very tedious process something that you would want to you know talk about uh, with uh, to people who have already done it you talk to peers there what is it exactly that they missed out on while they were applying what are the things that they did incorrectly or they would have done better so i talked to a few people i reached out to them i understood what are the you know lodging practices where do they stay what is more convenient what is it that they would have done better when it comes to applying for visas they told me that you know there are a lot of people who did this wrong and they did this wrong so you can be a little more careful about what is it and and learn from other people's mistakes and then go about applying for study uh, visas as well and canada's study visa application isn't uh, that tedious but then it takes a lot of time because there's a lot of financial aspect to it as well so you need to be very clear if you're going to take a loan if you're going to you know fund your own mba if your parents are going to be involved and and all of those things so my advice would be to start a little bit early it takes a lot of time and yeah just be mentally done with it as soon as possible so that there's no hassle going towards the uh, start of your mba how did you uh, so uh, how did you or what were the criteria that were important when you were choosing an mba admissions consultant what were the things that uh, you considered i think the primary criteria for me was that if i'm talking to someone i need to be uh, sure that that individual is able to give me enough time understand my profile understand my strengths and weaknesses and then help me craft my essays help me craft my profile in such a way that it actually comes out to be what it is and then when i talk to a few people and i even talk to you so in the first or the second call itself i sort of understood that you were interested in the way that uh, you know you wanted to understand more about my profile and when it comes to a lot of other people so it is a more mechanical and a very uh, you know okay so we are going to do 10 edits only or we are going to do 12 edits only and we are going to only target five schools for x amount of rupees and and all of that so i think flexibility and uh, 
more conversation is something that I was looking towards because again, if we were very comfortable in writing essays and understanding and navigating how to go about it, we would have done it on our own. But then we need help at every step of the process. And you uh, like we started our association pretty early. So it uh, also helped me build that trust factor that yes, okay, so if I'm having a certain problem, then I can always call you and you know understand how to go about it and how to you know work towards build, building my profile and secondly uh, again it, it it boils down to the trust factor and the fact that you know and you also nudged me to work towards um uh, my profile so if there was a certain task that uh, i had to do and i was slacking towards it, you you would nudge me to do it as well so there's a lot of to and fro that goes there and i believe that is what um makes a great team right